How are you doing? Good. Um, so, thanks for the introduction and happy to see all of you here. I um, want to talk a little bit about 3D printing, but also, more importantly, what is 3D printing enabling? How can we make cool stuff? And uh, what I want to talk about today is not only about making things uh, because we've been doing that, but also making things based on the IP that big companies have, uh, because there is some exciting stuff happening there. So it's kind of obvious if you look around us, and you know the maker community knows this better than anyone else, that um, we want to make our own products you know, for the things that we're really passionate about, for a hobby, or even for cool gifts. It's, it's much cooler to, to make it yourself or get something really original than um, to go for the mass-produced stuff. You know? But we have to realize what mass production really means. I mean, mass production has changed our society profoundly over the last you know, 100 years. Uh, we even structure society around mass manufacturing. If a company which is needed uh, wants to put a product in the market, it first needs to do research and need to understand what people want. And then they need to make prototypes, and then they need to, when the prototypes are right, they source it, big factory builds it. And all of that requires big, big numbers, because if we don't hit those big numbers, that whole long process, which ends with the shipping the products typically across the world, putting it in shops. If that big pro process doesn't run big numbers, it's unaffordable. And as a result, we get many products that are all the same and only a few different versions. But we don't want that. What we want is the stuff uh, that we have in our heads. And you know, if you're inspired by existing products even, you go like, I wish it had a different color or a different shape. You know, mass manufacturing doesn't cater to that. But that's why, um, you know, in 2007 already, I, I found the Shapeways. Just to make it possible using manufacturing, but then a different way, calling 3D printing, to enable everybody to make the things that you're passionate about. Um, you know, if you know how to use 3D software, you can create something on your computer, and a 3D printer can print it. And we're all now used to the fact that that is possible. And as a result, um, you know, Everybody is now embracing 3D printing as a way to make stuff. I'm not saying it's the only way, but it's a pretty powerful way. You can make really cool things. And it has profound implications about the way we think about products. Right? I just described briefly the process for mass manufacturing. With 3D printing, you don't, have, you don't need that process anymore. You come up with an idea. If you know how to model it in 3D software, you can print it. And then you can try it, whether people like it, whether you like it, where it looks good, or you change it. And on the marketplace that we have on Shapeways, many people start even selling those products because when they show it to friends and family, they like that. And um, they start selling it. And uh, some of our shop owners are becoming very, very successful. We have over 20,000 people now on Shapeways that are selling their products to a worldwide audience. And we print, as a result, over 150,000 unique products every month. And those numbers keep going up and up and up, which is really cool. So as a result, what are people making? Well, you know, um, you need a mount for your, for your GoPro camera. Here you go. This is a head mount uh, for a GoPro. You know, you want to have the coolest uh, iPhone case? Here you go. And actually, the fun thing about this thing, I don't have it with me, unfortunately. Um, this actually moves, so you can actually dial the numbers. And it then flips back, and you can dial the next number. I'm looking forward to the integration with the phone itself. Who knows? Someone might figure that one out. Um, people love model trains. I was raised with that. Uh, my dad were, and, my, uh, and his brother were big into model trains. And um, you know, when I now talk to my dad and lots and lots of people are super passionate about that, they go like, oh my god, I can finally have this special car, this special engine. I can make this special bridge that you, know, you can't buy because mass manufacturing can only make so much before it ceases to be economically viable. With 3D printing, we can make anything. So not surprising that hobbies like model trains or remote-controlled cars or planes are so such a fast adapters of 3D printing. Um, even jewelry, you know, and this is not s simple jewelry or not something like a simple pendant. Actually, someone figured that it would be cool to have a pendant based on the orbits of asteroids, the biggest asteroids that are rotating around the sun. So somehow you obtain the data for those uh, for those orbits and then use 3D software to, to put it into uh, an STL, and yep, we can print that, turns out. So it's not only in plastics, but also in other materials. And one of the inspirers for me was Bachiba Grossman, and uh, 
this is printed in solid metal. Um, I have it with me in front if someone of you want to see it and hold it. It's pretty phenomenal that uh, we can print in all kinds of different materials as well. People make chess or board games. You know, uh, I as a kid used to make board games, but I used pieces of papers and you know some uh, some pens to 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 make my own pieces. But now you can make real pieces, not only for chess but for anything you can come up with. There was one until now. There was one big no-go zone, and that's what we're what I want to talk about as well today. And that zone was if you had an idea around IP that someone else holds, a big company, for instance. You couldn't do it. You know, some companies might not react when you were making it on Shapeways or at home. They don't know, maybe. But you know, uh, if you do, then basically um, that's not, not what you're supposed to be doing, right? And we've seen this all before. You know, when the internet started to become more and more popular, and digital music files, the MP3 became popular, we started sharing them. And of course, the music industry didn't like that very much because they were making no money out of it. And they started to fight it. And as a result, I believe everybody was losing. And it took us quite some time because before we figured out that other models could work and give us what we wanted. Right? iTunes and Spotify are now, I think, pretty cool services um, that give you what you want. The music you want to listen to, um, you pay a little bit. Um, in case of Spotify, not, not even if you take the free service. And um, you can listen to the music you want, and everybody's happy. The artists, most important music industry, and you. So what can we, how can we learn from that and not make the same mistake we did with music? Well, that's why I'm super excited that quite recently we um, struck a deal with, uh, with Hasbro. Hasbro is one of the biggest holders of IP, and uh, you, know, you probably recognize some of the brands I put on here. They know they have big fans around that, and they wanted to enable people, anyone, to make cool products based on that content, on those ideas. You know, wouldn't it be cool if you could make your own Monopoly pieces? Wouldn't it be cool to make your own My Little Ponies or your own Transformer accessories or your own little Transformers? That's what they came and talked to us about, and I went like, absolutely, that's what we need to do. Not only enable original art, which is totally awesome, but why not also enable derivative art? People know what they want, even if it's based on, on IP that already exists. So this is, uh, I think, uh, already showing what is going on. This was done at... Uh, uh, My Little Pony conference, where you know people were already <laughs> finding that um, you know, and I have one here. Uh, this is Spiky. I've learned. I'm uh, not the biggest of My Little Pony fans, but I'm turning into one. And um, <laughs> I think it's cute, right? Um, I have a little girl. She's one years old, and I'm pretty sure in a few years she will have all kinds of cool My Little Ponies in the house. So the fact that now we can make kids happy with that, and there is a big passionate community around it. So what we did is we also started a, a new website called Super Fan Art, where the best of the best of those designs are featured. So it's easy for anyone to figure out what is already available, be inspired and either buy it or get going yourself. Uh, crank up the old software and start designing uh, something you want. And these are the original artists that made this happen when we launched uh, back in June. But um, besides the cool content that we already have made with, uh, around the My Little Pony uh, brand, and we did it there because the full color material works so well with 3D printing and My Little Ponies, we now are adding many other brands. Um, G.I. Joe is possible, Transformers, Monopoly, you know. Um, and I think this is only the, the next step. There is many more that uh, will follow, I'm pretty sure of it. We start to see more and more activity on the site. People are uploading hundreds upon hundreds of designs and uh, you know, we're pretty excited about that because it's just like when we started Shapeways in the beginning, there were a few models and then a few hundred and then a few thousand. By now, people upload 150,000 designs every month. I wouldn't be surprised in a, if we're going down a year from now that uh, half of the, the content uh, would be based on uh, existing brands. I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. So you can make your own little Monopoly uh, figurines or you can make even jewelry based on Scrabble. Uh, you know, why not? I'm, probably not even scratching the surface of the creativity that's out there. Uh, people will figure it out. That's one of the cool things of working at Shapeways, to be surprised about the cool stuff that people come up every day. You know, um, it's, it's really, really cool. Going back to what I originally said, mass manufacturing and how it works, 
the fact that we now are enabling people to make stuff also based on existing IP is a fundamentally game ch fundamental game changer for brands as well. Why? Because up until now, if you had a brand and you had a, a game or you had a, a movie and you, you had that, no, that, that original content and you wanted to merchandise it for one, you needed to figure out what would be the coolest stuff to merchandise. You know, when a movie is released, there are typically a few things that are released around it. And it's only a few for the very simple reason that mass manufacturing cannot do a lot. You know, you need to focus on the things that you believe will sell well. And that's a problem. So we have to do market research. We have to figure out what's the, the right merchandise around it. And I think this is a very cumbersome and actually risky process. And in the end, we don't get all that we want. We get only a little bit. So this is now changing. Because if we open up that creativity and enable people to make and come up with those things that they want, they start actually coming up with the best ideas. The company doesn't need to do it anymore, I think. I think the community will come up. You know, the fans of the brands will come up with uh, the best stuff that people want. And if some of that will be mass manufactured because there is so much demand, you know, who cares? You know, that's cool too. But in the end, what is changing fundamentally is that the fans become in charge of the products they want. And that's, I think, a fundamental change that is happening as a result of things that are you know, 3D printing, but in general called digital manufacturing. We, the end users, the makers, the fans, we become in control and we can define what we want. And that is so different from what we're used to, where companies define what we can buy. So the brands start to embrace the end user, the users, and I think uh, that will change a lot. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Any questions, feel free to ask. <laughs>